Hey there, curious minds! Have you ever watched an action movie or a war documentary and found yourself wondering, how does that machine gun keep firing like that? I mean, how can one trigger pull unleash such a rapid stream of bullets? What kind of mechanical sorcery is going on inside that thing? Well, you're not alone. And the answer is a lot more fascinating than you might expect. Behind every burst of automatic fire is a series of finely tuned components working together with explosive precision. From cycling mechanisms to heat management, it's all part of a carefully orchestrated dance of metal, gas, and recoil. In today's episode, we're tackling the question, how does a machine gun work? Why they fire so fast, how they reload themselves, and what keeps them from melting down in the process, right here. On History of Simple Things, Let's start simple. At its core, a machine gun is a firearm designed to fire bullets in rapid succession. Unlike regular semi-automatic guns that fire one shot per trigger pull, a machine gun continues firing as long as the trigger is held down, at least until the ammo runs out or the gun overheats. But what makes it capable of doing that? It all boils down to automation. Once the trigger is pulled, the gun takes care of everything. Firing the round, ejecting the spent cartridge, reloading a new round and doing it again, over and over, faster than a human ever could manually. When you pull the trigger of a machine gun, you're doing more than just making a loud noise. You're initiating a chain reaction. Here's how it plays out. The trigger releases the firing pin or striker, which hits the primer on the back of the bullet cartridge. That primer ignites the gunpowder inside, creating a burst of hot gas. That gas expands rapidly, propelling the bullet down the barrel at incredible speed. But here's where it gets interesting. What happens after the bullet leaves is just as important. The leftover energy from that gas, or from the movement of the bolt and recoil, is used to cycle the action and get the next bullet ready. This is where machine guns shine. They recycle that energy to do all the work automatically. Not all machine guns operate the same way. There are three main ways they handle this automatic cycle. Blowback, gas-operated, and recoil-operated systems. Let's start with blowback. This is the simplest design and is usually found in smaller, lighter guns. When the bullet is fired, the force of the gas pushes the bolt backward, ejects the spent casing, and chambers the next round using spring tension. It's easy to build, but not ideal for high-powered rounds. Next up is gas operation which is common in many military-grade automatic weapons. Here's how it works. A small hole in the barrel near the front allows some of the expanding gas to be redirected into a gas tube. That gas pushes a piston or directly moves the bolt carrier group backward. This system is more controlled and better suited for higher rates of fire. And finally, recoil operation. This system uses the actual recoil of the shot to cycle the action. Both the barrel and bolt move together briefly, then separate. The barrel stops, but the bolt continues moving, ejecting the spent casing and picking up a new round. Guns like the legendary M2 Browning 50 caliber use this method. Now that we know how machine guns cycle, the next big question is, how do they keep feeding all those bullets? Machine guns don't use standard magazines like a pistol does, not usually anyway. Instead, they often use belt-fed ammunition. That's right, long metal belts filled with cartridges, feeding into the weapon like a conveyor belt of destruction. 
As each round is fired, the mechanism pulls in the next cartridge from the belt, chambers it, fires, ejects, and repeats. This allows the gunner to fire hundreds of rounds without constantly reloading. Of course, some smaller machine guns use box magazines or drum magazines, but belt-fed systems are the go-to for sustained fire. Here's something that movies often skip over. Machine guns overheat. Firing hundreds of rounds rapidly generates a ton of heat. Metal expands, lubricants burn off, and barrels can warp or even melt. To deal with this, early machine guns like the Vickers used water cooling. Yes, literally a water jacket around the barrel. But in modern systems, air cooling, quick change barrels, and heat resistant alloys do the job. Many squad machine guns today have detachable barrels. After a few hundred rounds, you pop off the red hot barrel and replace it with a fresh one, like changing a light bulb, if the light bulb could melt steel. Let's talk numbers. Most machine guns fire between 600 to 1,200 rounds per minute. That's 10 to 20 bullets per second. But wait, that's the theoretical rate of fire. In real combat situations, gunners fire in controlled bursts to avoid overheating and to stay accurate. There's a practical limit to how fast you can actually use the weapon, even though some guns, like the minigun, can spin up to 6,000 rounds per minute. It's mounted on vehicles or helicopters with external power sources, not something you'd carry around on foot. So, there you have it. A machine gun might seem like a brute force tool, but it's actually a marvel of mechanical design. From redirecting explosive gas to carefully timed bolt movements and efficient cooling systems, everything inside a machine gun is fine-tuned to achieve one goal, sustained automatic fire. The next time you see one in a game, a movie, or a museum, you'll know just how much engineering brain power went into turning raw gunpowder into a continuous, controlled storm of bullets. It's a reminder that even the most intimidating machines are still just products of human problem solving. For better or worse, they reflect our ability to push mechanical systems to their limits, and they show how necessity, especially in times of war, can drive some of the most complex innovations in engineering. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.